stuff. Good stuff. All right. This is the last thing we're going to talk about before you can close out the show, Mr. Dickinson. Don't know if you had a chance to see this. NFL official says league will support the bid for flag football to be featured at the Los Angeles 2028 Olympics. <laughs> you down? You going? I'm, you got I'm, a team ready. I'm with it. <laughs> now, they will probably use the same format that they used when they had that, um, that the other NFL flag, competition. That yeah, yeah. We and weren't real happy with that because like no blocking. You couldn't couldn't even push the guy off. Yeah, they took most of the physicality out of it. Um, but that's okay. I mean, it's still a good game, but it's it's purely skill. There's there's almost no physicality um in it at all. And they didn't even use screen block, you couldn't block at all. I know guys would guys would catch what how was it the uh the, the the oh yeah once a guy would catch the ball everybody, everybody would stop. just stand still yep yep and then we were like what's he doing you know and then yeah. when they were playing the NFL teams I remember the one guy caught the ball and he went to make a break and he stuck his arm out with the classic <laughs> and stiff arm the guy and they're like flag yeah <laughs> like, you can't That's do that problem. No stiff arm. And see, that's crazy. And that's why there's so many different formats of flag football. Because in non-man flag, you can stiff arm. Oh, really? Yes. Non-man flag, you can stiff arm. In eight-man flag, you cannot stiff arm. In non-man flag, they use the sonic pop flags. In eight-man flag, they use the triple threat flags, where you have one on each hip and one in the back. So, you know, the flag football that I know, that I see in tournaments, when I travel to different places, to me, there's, there's five-man, six-man, seven-man contact, seven-man non-contact, seven-man screen, they, and they play that on an 80-yard field that's 40 yards wide. It's, it's so many variations of flag football, and they're all great in their own right. So to me, that little NFL style thing that they were playing, I mean, it's another style, but it's kind of a compilation of a couple of different kind of styles kind of put together. But it's flag football, so I love it. <laughs> I was getting ready to say so we're talking 2028. So there's, there's still a little bit off in the future. Yeah. You know, but I just thought that was interesting. Flag football in the Olympics, man. Yeah. And, and flag you guys got to play all over. Flag football is played. I know in the, what is it? What are we in the Western hemisphere? Yeah. Okay. It, it's played all over. I've been to tournaments where there were teams from the Bahamas, Cayman Islands, Mexico, Puerto Rico, I've seen them. They're, they're out there. Canada, yeah, flag football's big. Well, it's the same thing with, you know, um, foot, American football in general. You're just so amazed that, um, you know, it's, it's so many different places throughout the, you know, throughout the world that it's being played and being celebrated. And we're going to see more of that as the NFL continues their uh, expansion internationally. That's the next growth phase for them. You know, they're growing through media, but uh, geographically, they're looking to expand. They'll be having more games in, in England. Once uh, the vaccinations worldwide starts to catch up and you're no longer afraid to go to places like Mexico, they'll probably be back down in Mexico. Mexico, you know, has, has some big fan base down there, you know, for the NFL, no doubt about it. So um, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, but yeah, flag football. Uh, and it's here. It's, it's here in the United States. So you know, you have an opportunity uh, a little closer to home. Take advantage of that. All right. And you guys have a tournament coming up, right? We actually have two. We got a summer showdown going down in uh, 
a little town right near Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, I'll be going down with uh, the Philly Legends, which is a 35 and over team. If in fact there are other 35 and over teams there, we will play in that division. If there's not enough of them, then we will play in the comp division, which is basically division two, meaning that we'll be playing a lot of um, teams with much younger players than, than we have. But we're going for the competition because we're trying to prepare ourselves for nationals. So we've already signed on for that. And we're gonna, in fact, I have practice, we have practice tonight. <laughs> That's in uh, mid-July. And then we have the Philly Bowl. The Philly Bowl. Yes, I think it's Philly Bowl 6, which has grown in exponentially since the first Philly Bowl that we had down at 29th and Chalmers. And now we've moved. It's, it's so big that they might have to change the name because we had to move it to Delaware to get, to get enough fields to accommodate all the teams that are coming from out of town. Now um, I saw an ad. Who's the who is it again? That's uh, that put the ad out for that. Blade Brown. Blade. Yeah, I wanted to give a shout out to Blade Brown on the show. Yes, sir. You know he's the commissioner of the um, UFL, and he is also a national director for the UFFL, who um, puts on most of the tournaments and sanctions tournaments. And uh, this is a UFFL sanctioned tournament, and. Um, that's the nationals that we usually go to, UFFL. So he's a national director with them, and he's the commissioner of our league. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. I want to give a shout out then to Blade Brown, um, who's also given us some, some, some support on Instagram uh, as a part of our posts and things of that nature. 